tears, they taste like vinegar and blood And these conversations choke us till we're numb No matter what we say, it never seems enough So take me to the start, take me to that kiss Hey guys, welcome back to our second episode of Car Union. Just to kind of explain what's going on here, I'm about to go pick up my friend, Pastor David Hulse. Uh, David was arrested a couple months ago. We had actually shot a full episode of Car Union, but it didn't work out. So we're here, we're gonna re-record it and get this story out to you. He's working today? <laughs> okay, this one, as long as I reset it, I think it will work. Right. That guy has always been working, so. All right, good. Welcome back. Glad to be here. Welcome, Eli. Hey. Are you ready to be famous on the internet? No. No, no. it could happen. So. Okay, so fill, fill us in on what happened to you. Why did you get arrested? All right. So LaGrange has been home to a nonprofit group called the Beds Plus for mm -hmm. 27 years. Uh, their primary job is homelessness prevention and uh, helping people in that situation to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, they have overnight emergency shelters that they run and uh, work out of two different churches here on the south side of LaGrange, uh, First Pres and Emmanuel Episcopalian. And they have office space spread throughout both. They wanna build their own permanent site. How many people would they house there? 20. 20, awesome. 20 units, 10 on the th second and 10 on the third floor. A uh, little efficiency apartment mm -hmm. type of deal where uh, you'd have your own kitchenette living bedroom bathroom area and yeah. then some common Privacy. yeah exactly Dignity, yeah. a house yeah. <laughs> a place to live yeah. but the land deal ended up getting messed up and it's in litigation you know who owns it and so it just became this nightmare yeah. so beds decided to start looking in other communities and with the help of the village trustees and the village staff they found the property on ogden and uh, decided to go ahead with that got our plans in, got everything submitted, and some of the neighbors who live on the east side, or on the west side actually, who live near the uh, current sites, um, were very upset with beds. LaGrange, we're, you know, we're like a hundred plus year old community, and the east side of the tracks, the east side of LaGrange, uh, originally was where all of the, the, the maids and butlers and house servants lived. Hmm. Uh, and <laughs> the the people of LaGrange that have the longest, deepest roots are the people on the east side. Yeah. Fifth, sixth, seventh generation of LaGrange. And the rest of it is new money running out of the city to come to the suburbs and live uh -huh. in their Mayberry. On yeah. the north uh, easternmost corner of LaGrange, there's em an empty lot that's been there for 20-some years. Yeah. Uh, it used to be a gas station, mm -hmm. went under, and it's been a vacant lot ever since. So... Uh, Beds found this property with the help of the trustees and decided we want to build this this uh, permanent site there to house all the Beds offices, the day programs. Uh, the day programs have people coming in almost every day looking for some sort of help yeah. uh, that we can't provide. I mean, we yeah, just don't have yeah. the tools. And so Beds has a team of social workers that know all sorts of government programs and yes. things that we just will never get. If I send people there two or three times a week to talk to to meet with a, a caseworker. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing, they, they serve like 500 people a year. And most of them, you know, aren't homeless. Most of it's in homelessness prevention, right? Like yeah, yeah. people who are one paycheck away and lose a job, they, yeah. they you know, they don't know where to turn. Yeah. So we, we found this, this piece of land and we're going through zoning because of, the zoning there is commercial and this needs to be institutional. But the neighbors who live near those two churches have a huge problem with the Beds clientele. They moved to LaGrange to get away from those people. Those people. Yeah, those people. And now they're here and you know, it's, you know, they're freaking out about what oh, the kids, my kids have to see it. You know, it's, it's sad. So they decided to raise a bunch of ruckus and, and prevent Beds from building anything in the community. They want them gone. You know, mm -hmm. they want homeless people going. They don't want to fix the problem. They just don't want to see it. Yeah. This group that's against beds moving in 
started circulating these anonymous letters about how awful beds is and what this you know what these clientele have done to the community so we met uh, at Starbucks I had yeah. my little sign and we decided we were just gonna t- talk to some people set up a tent so and you, you pitched a tent I pitched a tent literally on, the, on, the, literally on the village hall lawn and I have a, a cardboard pizza box top that I turned into a sign that said Jesus was homeless uh, you know Foxes have their holes, birds have their nests, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And, you know, just to, to kind of do something a little bold, make a statement and say, this is, you know, an issue in our community that no one is really talking about, except for people who are against it, which yeah. is kind yeah. of ridiculous, especially in LaGrange, right? We have this incredible network of social service agencies for mental health, for battered women, for yeah. for people in that low end of the, you know, the income bracket. They're they're here they're supporting this community and so we have a long and rich history of loving and caring for our neighbor and here's a way to really do it well and some of these neighbors who are new to the area who moved in who thought LaGrange is this you know Mayberry that you know uh-huh. we don't have to deal with any of those people are shocked that they're here and they don't want any more Daddy? yeah bud it's fine um, guess what blade I just got I don't know man what blade bamboo did you... blade Bla- <laughs> bamboo blade all right fruit ninja uh, I <laughs> Like tons of star fruit. Awesome. <laughs> Actually, I I do have a gift for you. Do you? Yeah. I okay. So I felt bad that we recorded <laughs> that we recorded and, and, and it, it didn't work. And and so because you got arrested, I and your, oh. wife, and your wife didn't visit you in jail. I she thought, did, she didn't visit I, me. No. I, I thought I would bring this. <laughs> <laughs> it better be something to break out of jail with, like a file. I was really proud of myself. It's not from Bloomingdale's. I was going to say Bloomingdale's. I feel very special. <laughs> it's a toothbrush. No. That's a ship. I made a ship for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Eli, look, I got a sword too. It's a ship. <laughs> you need to teach him about that later. I'm going to have to hide this on my person somewhere in case you get arrested again. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, this is totally going to my morning. office. Our understanding in the Lutheran tradition, especially, right? We don't sit on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus called us to be engaged in the world and to go out to those that the world considers the lowest, the least, the lost, right? Yeah. And so, you know, here's an opportunity to to be an advocate on behalf of those yeah. not not who are voiceless, but whose voices have not been allowed to be heard, right? Totally. And in our role as pastors, we have this really unique position on a weekly basis to get up and proclaim the word, but you know, to do it out in the public square yeah. really uh, I think is a, yeah. a, a Lutheran tradition uh, and so I wanted to go out I wanted to make a statement but I wanted to also you know be an advocate for our, our brothers and sisters who don't have a place to lay their head and let mm. our neighbors know like this is a real issue that that people are you know this close to losing everything and we have yeah. a chance to help them Absolutely. or have already lost everything and we have a chance to yeah. give them a, the opportunity to start pulling themselves up. So yeah, it, it passed. We're doing the fundraising side. Our, our oh, how much are, do you need to raise? About five million, but on the, the private side, it's right under two. HUD has money that's earmarked and set aside and we already have that. So can individuals support this? Individuals can support How this. How would they do it? Uh, well, we've started a capital campaign and once we've uh, gotten a base from our big corporations and partners, uh, we'll start to, to ask as part of that. It's at beds-plus.org. Awesome. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah, what's Pastor it? Dave 81 Follow this guy on Twitter if you're not already. Eli, you want to say goodbye on the camera? Oh. Now your camera's shy? Come on, man. Say thanks for the ride, Brian. <laughs> well, Eli, I'm so psyched that you got to ride with us today. David, thank you for sharing. Thank you, sir. Always appreciate it. Check out uh, what's going on um, at uh, beds plus. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Okay, we got it. But I, I do appreciate it. And good luck with that uh, little shiv of yours. This will, this will keep me out of trouble if we get arrested on Monday. Are you making faces on my camera? Say right. bye, Eli. Bye, Eli. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks.
mountains, Eli? Eli, have you ever seen mountains? I don't think you have. I don't think your son's listening to He isn't listening to me, which is par for the course. Yeah.